Hey guys, it's Jenny. <laughs> that was a weird little wave that like just showed up in the bottom corner. Like, hey guys, it's me. <laughs> Can you see me waving? Hey guys, it's Jenny and welcome back once again to Solid Gold. If you missed my last video, which I put out a couple weeks ago, then this is the first time you're seeing me in a video in many, many months. So hello, I'm back. If you missed that video from a couple weeks ago, I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner of this video so you can go and watch that first. But if you did see it, you'll remember that I told you guys I got a new reptile, which is my first ever crested gecko. And this is actually only my second type of reptile that I've owned as a pet. Unless you count the anoles that I had when I was like 10, which I don't really count them. So <laughs> yeah, my second reptile species that I've ever had. And honestly, like many years ago, five years ago or so, I would always like see people getting crusty geckos and be like, why? You know, I just didn't get it. But I wasn't a big reptile person back then anyways. And when I first dipped my toe into having a reptile as a pet, it was a leopard gecko. and. I love them and I have two now, absolutely adore them and I've been going to more and more reptile shows over the past few years and every time I saw the crested geckos I would just be like, you know what, I get it. I get it, they're super cute, there's so many different color morphs and patterns that you can get and I, I have been bit by the crusty bug, I must say. I really, really adore my new little crusty gecko, he's a male, his name is Simba and um, yeah, he's just adorable. So in this video, I'm going to introduce him to you guys and I'm also going to just give you a little bit of information, general information, basic stuff about crested geckos that you may want to know if you're considering getting a crested gecko in the future or if you just want to learn more about them because you think they're cool. So I'm going to switch to my smaller handheld camera now and I'm going to take you guys way up there with me to his cage on my terrarium rack, which is like six feet up off the ground. And I'm going to show you guys where he's hiding in his little hiding spot that he likes and take him out and show you to him. Show you to him so I can show him to you in this video. I gotta use a step ladder to get up here because it's so tall. But I actually, I don't know for sure, obviously, but I actually think, or I wonder if the crested gecko and the white tree frogs appreciate being way up high because they are arboreal species and they normally live up in the treetops anyways. So I kind of think they might actually like it, especially the crested gecko. But um, yeah, so here I am <laughs> up at tank level now and I'm gonna reach in and get him because I can see him way back there up against the background. I can just barely see his tail, but that's where he's hiding out and you wanna be really careful when handling your crested gecko because crested geckos, like many gecko species, can drop their tails. Oop, he's gonna get a little skittish. I actually haven't held him in a couple of days, so he's not as used to it as he could be. <laughs> so he's gonna freak out a little bit and jump around, but I will eventually catch up with him. As much as possible, I want to try to let him crawl onto my hand instead of grabbing him. There you go, bud. He jumped right onto me. All right, let's come down here. So here he is. Here's my little Simba. I believe his color morph is what's called a yellow harlequin based on his pattern. I'm still learning all the different morphs of crested geckos though, so I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's what he is. He also has little black speckles all over him and those are called Dalmatian spots. Super cute. And when I first got him, he was a lot lighter than this in the store when I was picking him out. And a little bit later that night after I had gotten him home and set up in his new house, um, he started to get really dark. Like right now he's about halfway there, but he can get a lot darker than this. And that's what's called fired up, when their colors are really, really bright and contrasty and vivid. And they'll do that for a number of different reasons. Either they're excited about something, maybe it's a male trying to show off and impress a female, or maybe it's a change in humidity or temperature that'll bring it on, 
or they're stressed out, you know, there, there's a lot of different reasons why they can fire up, but it's a normal thing that you will notice in your own crested gecko if you have one too. When a crested gecko reaches a certain age, you can tell the difference between males and females really easily. You just look at the underside of the very base of their tail, and if it's a female, it'll be fairly smooth looking there, but if it's a male, he will have two bulges, one on either side, kind of of the tail, right underneath at the base of the tail, and those are the hemipenal bulges and it's very very obvious especially if you see a male and female side by side which one is male and which one is female. You can see that he has a somewhat prehensile tail that he is using to actually hold on to me in addition to all of his feet. So that's the super, super cool thing that I love about crested geckos. It's similar to a chameleon, you know, they can use their tail to actually grip onto you. And if I like pull slightly away, I can actually feel him like gripping on with his tail. It's the coolest thing. Now with crested geckos, they can drop their tail. A lot of different gecko species do this when they feel threatened or they're cornered by a predator or something. They will um, purposely drop their tail. It'll just fall off. Um, it doesn't leave a huge nasty wound because their, their cells are actually designed to do that. So the blood vessels um, close up really fast and they can run away while the tail is left behind and actually wiggles for quite some time after it detaches and the predator will then go for the tail because it looks enticing and the lizard can get away. Now with a lot of lizard species they'll actually regrow their tail but crested geckos don't so they will just be stuck with what's called a frog butt for their whole life and it's not bad for the gecko in any way it's actually said that geckos in the wild most of them when they're adults have missing tails it's just something that very very commonly happens i'm going to do my best to try and keep simba's tail on him because i love it it's just so cute the way he uses it when he crawls around and um, if i can avoid ever you know putting him in a situation where he feels threatened that would be great too obviously so a couple tips on keeping your crested gecko's tail on him you want to house your crested geckos alone by themselves. It's not always a good idea to mix crested geckos together, especially multiple males together in the same enclosure. Not a good idea because they will fight with one another and when that happens, a lot of times the tails will drop off. Um, even females with males wouldn't be a good idea because the male will constantly try to breed with the female, especially if there's just one female in there and stress her out. Also, they can be territorial um, males against females and vice versa, not just males and males. And then females also can be territorial with one another. And I just think it's best for me personally, for my animals to, <laughs> if there's any risk of anything bad happening, to keep them by themselves. So that's what I'm doing with him. He has that whole big tank all to himself and he always will. So hopefully he'll keep his tail. Isn't that right? And also with handling, you want to make sure that you're never doing anything that's going to startle your crested gecko. So no fast movements, no grabbing, you know, just when you're taking them out of their enclosure, if you do, when you do, um, make sure you're moving slowly and you're being really gentle. And if you can, if at all possible, try and get your gecko to crawl onto you rather than you grabbing it. But I don't think anyone should feel bad if they have a crested gecko that is a frog butt. It's just something that a lot of times is pretty unavoidable. Crested geckos are naturally found in the southern region of New Caledonia, which is an island off the coast of Australia. And they were once thought to be extinct in the wild, but today they're actually one of the most popular pet reptiles because they're pretty easy to breed in captivity and fairly easy to care for, especially when you compare them to some other reptiles that you can keep as a pet. One thing that I never knew before I got a crested gecko is how soft they are. Not only is just their skin in general kind of soft, but they also have sticky lamellae on their toes and also on the ends of their tails. Those lamellae are what they use to help them cling to smooth surfaces so they can be such good climbers, but they also just feel really soft. And when the gecko is crawling on you, it just feels like a light, soft, like velvety cushion or something. It's adorable. They look really spiky, right? Because they have these spikes all um, 
over their eyes, which make them look like they have fabulous eyelashes, on the sides of their heads, and then all down their backs into the tail. Um, but those spines are actually really soft and flexible. Another thing I didn't know about crested geckos until I got Simba is that their hind legs are actually slightly webbed. So they have just a little bit of extra skin on their back legs especially that make it look like they're wearing little slouchy pants. But this actually serves a really cool purpose. So in the wild, cresties spend all their time up in the treetops, climbing and jumping from branch to branch. And sometimes they leap really far distances and if they miss, they have a backup plan. So they actually can spread out their legs and the partial webbing of the hind legs acts sort of like a parachute to help them fall a little bit slower so they can safely grab onto a branch again. It's so cool. Crested geckos are omnivorous, so they eat a variety of insects and fruit in the wild. And as pets, most people feed their cresties a commercially prepared paste food like rapashi or pangea, and they also offer live insects like crickets a couple of times a week. Young cresties that have the option to feed on insects at least a couple times a week in addition to their paste diet do tend to grow better. So Simba gets a few crickets let loose in his enclosure regularly so he can hunt them down while he's awake at night. He tends to sleep in the same spot, kind of hidden in the leaves up against the background of his enclosure all day long. And you'd almost never know it, but actually at night he is very active. I'm a night owl, so I do spend a lot of late nights out here in the animal room Room, and whenever I look into Simba's enclosure, he's always in a different spot. He's very, very sneaky and secretive though, so unless I'm putting him back into his enclosure after holding him, I never see him actually moving around because he does it when I'm not looking. Okay. Okay, can you get out of my hair? So there's your introduction to Simba. Now you've met the little guy and you know a little bit of information about crested geckos and what makes them so unique and interesting and cool to have as pets. I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Simba and if you want to learn more about how to properly care for a crested gecko, I will be doing more videos on them in the future, including one that goes in depth um, as far as like how to set up their cage, what kind of temperature and humidity they need, what kind of lighting and other care requirements for them. So be looking out for that. I'm sure you guys will be seeing more of Simba in many of my future videos because he's adorable and I would love to share him with you guys. Oh, I also want to say that Simba is the newest member of my reptile family that I have to introduce you guys to, but he's actually not the latest member. After him, there's another new one to introduce you to. So I have now three different species of reptiles under my care, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. But if you follow me on my personal Instagram account, you already know what she is. So I'll be introducing her in a future video, but for now, I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Simba. I sure am enjoying having him in my life, and just like Learning more about a new species of animal is always something that I love doing, especially if I can learn hands-on by actually having one as a pet and like holding in. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure enjoy sharing my animals with you guys. So I'll see you next time and until then, stay gold. Also a reminder guys that if you haven't yet gotten my 2019 wall calendars, I still have them available at the link in the description section down below. This one here is my multi-pet one, so I have like frogs, geckos, and fish on it. There's a little cute picture of Ducky for January, but there is a just goldfish version of the calendar this year too, so there's two different options. I'll put the link for those in the description down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You look so cute. You are so cute. Say bye.